Hello everybody, we are now going to talk about a great venue for big band jazz that was not originally intended to be exactly that. We're talking about the Paramount Theater. You see, it was open simply to premiere Paramount's great movie features in grand style. It opened in 1926 on 43rd and Broadway. This monstrosity could seat 3,700 people. And it was ornate to say the least. They did not spare a penny in the design. Big archway, big marquee out front. When you get in there, it's like walking into the Paris Opera House. You've got white marble columns everywhere. Oh yeah, you've got an open arm staircase right in front of you. Inside you've got red velvet drapes and carpet to match. All the banisters and railings are brass. The ceiling is all fresco. And along the walls are Greek statues, full statues, and a few busts. The seating is plush with a capital P. It was built for splendor and comfort. And the first movie they showed was God Gave Me 20 Cents. Hmm. But that was it. It was a hit in 1926. And they opened up with a stage show before the movie. And people enjoyed that. It was also fitted with an orchestra pit. Except this orchestra pit came all the way up to stage level. Most orchestra pits come up to about five or six feet below stage level. This one came all the way up as an extension to the stage if need be. So eventually, they started featuring big bands up in there. Yeah. And they brought them all in. Well, not all of them, some of them. Gene Krupa, Tommy Dorsey, Xavier Cougar. You know, Jack Benny had a band that traveled with him. Jack Benny was there. The Ink Spots were there. Guy Lombardo was there. You name these big society big bands, and they were there. Now, two other Paramount theaters spawned off from the main one on Broadway. In Midtown, it was a smaller one that still stands this very day, that seated about 1,500 people. And it is in that particular venue that a young Max Roach played with Duke Ellington. But Billy Eckstein played in both rooms, the one in Midtown and the one on Broadway. Billy Eckstein had quite a show going. This was their formula for decades. But as things change, things change. And somewhere around 1986, this grand theater, combination big band venue, came to a screeching halt. And the last film that was viewed there was James Bond Thunderbolt in 1986. The building was completely gutted and for a while became the offices for the New York Times. As the Times grew, they vacated and the World Wrestling Federation, that's right, I said it, WWF came in 
And they, you know, they like a show. So the first thing they tried to do was recreate the ambiance of uh, ambiance of the uh, original. So they redid the opening, the archway, and all of that. They added a restaurant, you know, theme for wrestling and all that kind of thing. And they were doing pretty good. They added a marquee out front. It still had Paramount on it. They were doing the best they could with it. But they got into a lawsuit. You see, there's another group called the World Wildlife Fund. And they were offended by the World Wrestling Federation calling itself the WWF. You got two WWFs. <laughs> this was a big, bad legal fight. And yeah, let's just say the wrestlers lost. And the financial aspect of everything caused them to simply move out. You know, we're done. So today, if you go to New York City and you go looking for the Parama, you just might miss it unless you go to the Broadway Hard Rock Cafe. What? Yes, the Broadway Hard Rock Cafe is housed in the same building as the original Paramount Theater. Ain't that something? From all that audience to a hard rock cafe. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it's funny to me. Meanwhile, down the street a little bit, in Midtown, the smaller Paramount still stands. And it's still hosting musical events to this very day. And their claim to fame is they have the best acoustics of any building in New York City, except for Carnegie Hall itself. And now you know the rest of the story of the great Paramount Theater. Have a great day. And next time you're in New York, be sure to stop by the Broadway Hard Rock, baby. Thank you.